All right, ladies and gentlemen, and for the first time, welcome to an HF Viking Baseball playoff live stream. Hello, everyone. I'm Dylan Barnes. I'm going to be calling this game and hopefully the remainder of the six games throughout the Vikings playoff push to a state championship. Today, the 19 and 15 Homewood Flossmore Vikings are going to be taking on the 18, 14 and 1 Andrew Thunderbolts. These teams faced off on April 10th, about a month and a half ago, and it was a long one. HF won 14 to 13 in 12 innings in a game that took five hours. It started at 4.30, game did not end until nine. And on the mound today for the Vikings is the lefty, Vince Waterman. Waterman was a little shaky in his last outing, went five innings pitched, 11 hits, 10 earned runs, two walks and four strikeouts against Bradley Bourbonnet, but his Start prior to that one, he was absolutely stellar. Seven innings pitched, five hits, no runs, one walk, and two strikeouts. A complete game shutout against a very good Lions team that was ranked in the top ten of the state when that game happened. Patrick Keating will be the first batter for the Thunderbolts here in this top of the first inning. Shortstop. We'll lead things off. Here's the first pitch from Waterman. It's in there for strike one. Great start to the game from Waterman. This is a Vikings team that's three and two in their last five. Their last game was a 10 to nothing win over Brother Rice. A no hitter by Cormac Saunders and Henry Humes took down the Crusaders. Very quickly 0 and two to Patrick Keating. Keating swung through a fastball right there. So Waterman will try and start this game right with a K of Keating. 0-2 pitch. Inside, 1-2. and two. Nearly hit Keating right there. Waterman can still punch him out with just one pitch. One, two. That's hit in the air. Right field, Ballard going back on it. He'll settle under it and make the catch for the first out of this first inning. Now's a good time to tell you the Vikings defense. The infield, left to right, it's Nico Bilgi at third, Rob Tate at short, Corey Mulling at second, and Elijah Rainey at first. In the, in the outfield, you got Chris Webb in left, Dylan Head in center, and Jason Ballard in right field. Behind the plate is Preston Lund. Now stepping in will be the center fielder, Nick Altabelli. Take ball one, just low and inside from Waterman. One zero from Waterman. Fastball, great spot, one and one. Waterman using that two seam action to get it to tail back in over the inner third of the plate. A ball and a strike now. One one pitched out the belly. Breaking ball. Just barely upstairs, two and one. Two and one pitch from Waterman. Jam shot fouled off, two and two now. This is a Thunderbolts team that's two and three in their last five. They're coming off of a six to three loss at the hands of Marion Catholic. HF beat that Marion team 11 to seven last Monday. That's line one hop right into the glove of Nico Bilgi. He's gonna come up and fire to first. A great defensive play by Nico Bilgi. For the second out of the first inning, a ball that was hit on one hop exactly into his glove. He barely had to move. So two up, two down to start the first. Jacqueline Conte, the right fielder, will be will try and avoid a one-two-three inning for the Thunderbolts in the top of the first. First pitch you'll see from Waterman. Skipped in the dirt, one and one. One and zero to Lincante. 
Waterman winds. Here's the pitch. Grounded to Rainey. At first, it's going to go off his glove. He's going to flip to Waterman in time for a 1-2-3 first inning. Three balls put in play. Three plays made by the Vikings. And it's a three up, three down top of the first with the Vikings coming to bat. On the mound today for the Thunderbolts, it's going to be a pitch of the Vikings have seen before. Righty Alex Day threw the 7th through 10th innings pitched in that 12-inning game on April 10th. The righty went three innings pitched, allowed two hits, three earned runs, two walks, and struck out five. Leading things off for the Vikings, as he has in every game, it's going to be the center fielder Dylan Head. In the game against Brother Rice, Head went one for three with a walk, an RBI, and a run scored. Head is currently chasing history. He's batting 495 on the year. The record at HF is 505, set by Gary Giles and Tony Steele in 2000 and 2002. So Head needs to go at least three for four today. We'll see a backdoor breaking ball from Day 0 and 1. It's not the only record Head is chasing. He's trying to break his own record that he set last year. 35 stolen bases, he's got 31 so far. That's ball one up and out. He's not the only Viking that is nearing a record. I'll tell you more about him when he comes up to the plate in the first inning. Ball and a strike is a count ahead. Breaking ball, grounded foul, one and two. And on a day that was about 80 degrees in the afternoon, it has cooled down to about 60. And with the wind blowing directly in from left field, it's a bit brisk. Ball and two strikes to head. Way upstairs, two and two. Got to be very careful with this next pitch because he can't go full to head. He's got great bat control and a great eye. And a walk to him is pretty much allowing a man on third. That's up and out one more time. It's full. Day is going to have to be very selective with this pitch. You can't groove him anything because then he's going to give the Vikings a 1-0 lead. But you also can't nibble the corners because then you're just going to walk him. Full count pitch. It's fouled back. Still full count. This will be the seventh pitch of the at-bat. Full count pitch to head. Fouled back one more time. Still full. Head doing a good job of working the count, making Day throw some pitches.
Three balls, two strikes. Nobody out here in the bottom of the first. Fouled back yet again. We will see a ninth pitch in this opening at bat of the bottom of the first. You all know the count by now. It's full. Had lines one into the right center field gap, and that one is going to be ran down by Altabelli. Out there, he was shifted that way. So a short run for Altabelli. Sends head back to the dugout for the first out of the bottom of the first. Second baseman Corey Mulling will be the second batter of this bottom of the first. Mulling went two for three with three RBIs. Two runs scored and a stolen base against Brother Rice. Also was hit by pitch in one of his at-bats. See a breaking ball for the first strike from Alex Day. So that's two straight batters that Day has let off with that breaking ball. O one one to Mulling. Off the plate. Good take by Mulling, one and one. Ball and a strike is the count from Day. Here's a pitch to Mulling. Fastball, strike two. Mulling trying to avoid being the second out in as many batters in the bottom of the first. One, two. Gets away from Holtman. It wouldn't have been a strike even if he had caught it. Two and two. Two and two. Here's a pitch to Mulling. Breaking ball that he's able to fight off. Keeping the count at two and two. Vikings batters are doing a good job of going deep in the counts so far, even though it's only been two of them. They've both seen at least five pitches from Day. Mulling flies one into right center field. Altabelli coming in on it. He'll make the catch in shallow right center field, a couple feet in front of where he made it, the catch to retire ahead. So he's made both Let's outs in this first five. inning. Jason Baylor. Right fielder Jason Ballard went one for four against Brother Rice, and he was the other Viking that is chasing history. He's got 29 walks on the year. The record is 32, set by Jake Virgo in 2002. So four walks would break the record. That one's roped, one hop, Keating backhand play. That's a great play by Patrick Keating to retire Jason Ballard for a three up, three down, bottom of the first inning. So through one, we have yet to see a base runner.
Vince Waterman trying to build off of his 1-2-3 top of the first inning. Starting this top of the second, it's going to be Danny O'Malley. Danny O'Malley. In a game that ended 14-13 on April 10th, we are through one and we have not seen a base runner. That's low to O'Malley, ball one. There were 33 hits combined and 27 runs total in that April 10th matchup. Breaking ball, great pitch from Waterman. Evens things at a ball and a strike. One one to O'Malley. Low ball two. Waterman has changed his wind up a little bit since the last time we saw him out on the mound. He's bringing his hands up over his head. He didn't used to do that before. 2-1. That's low, ball three. O'Malley thought about it, was able to check his swing. Three balls and a strike. Here's a pitch from Waterman. Tipped into the glove of Lund, three and two. So Waterman trying to start the second like he did the first with an out. Full count pitch to O'Malley. Grounded to Rainey at first. He's up with it, and he will take it himself for the first out of the second inning. Third baseman, number 18, Jacob Miller. Third baseman, Jacob Miller, will try and avoid be being the fifth consecutive batter retired by Vince Waterman. First pitch to Miller. It's low, ball one. One and oh. That one's lined right to Mulling at second base. All he had to do was reach up. And he found himself the second out of the second inning. Designated hitter, number three, Ryan Lee. Ryan Lee, the DH for these Thunderbolts, trying to prevent a second straight three up, three down inning for Vince Waterman. He's behind in the count, 0-1 now. A good fastball on the lower third. Has Waterman ahead, 0-1. Oh one swing and a miss. Great pitch there from Waterman. That's a pitch that we've really seen develop as the years come on. That change up from Waterman. He first debuted it against Lions, and then he threw a complete game shutout. 0-2 is a count to Lee. That's popped foul. Still 0-2. Lee trying to avoid being the first strikeout victim of Waterman's day. So far, Waterman has gotten three ground balls, a line drive, and a fly ball. Looking for his first punch out. 0-2. In the dirt, ball one. Waterman put a little bit extra on that one. He's still ahead. A ball and two strikes. One, two. That one's popped in the air down the left field line. Chris Webb giving it chase. He's going to watch it fall in foul territory. The wind blew that one out of reach from Chris. That wind is definitely going to knock down a few balls out there in left field. It's not whipping, but it is definitely blowing. So the count to Lee is still one and two. Waterman trying to send him back to the dugout. That one's line grounded right to Mauling on one hop. He's up with it, and he'll make the play 
for six up and six down, courtesy of Vince Waterman. So through one and a half innings, we have yet to see a base runner. Leading off this bottom half of the second inning, it's going to be the Vikings catcher, Preston Lund. Lund hit one of two extra base hits for the Vikings against Brother Rice. Lund was two for four with a double, an RBI, and a run scored. Lund is currently tied for fourth in the Vikings' home run standings with four. Big swing and a miss, 0-1. Lund was trying to add his fifth right there. Long look in from Day. Now we'll step off. Wiping something off his face, perhaps. Sweat, bugs, who knows. Now he'll look in to Haltman. He'll get the sign and deliver the 0-1 pitch. Lund taps it on the ground to Keating. He's going to have to hurry, and he'll make the play to retire Lund for the first out of the second. Designated hitter, number 13, Isaiah White. DH for today, Isaiah White went one for three with a walk against Brother Rice. We've seen White and Chris Webb rotate duties in left field. Isaiah will take strike one. So through 10 batters between either team, we have yet to see a strikeout. 10 balls put in play. Make it 11. That one's grounded to Miller at third. Long throw, and it will be a good throw to Alexander at first base for the second out of the second inning. First baseman, number four, Elijah Rainey. Elijah Rainey, the Vikings' first baseman for today, went two for four with a double, an RBI, and a run scored against Brother Rice. That double was a long double. It one-hopped the center field fence, and it ended the game. It scored the 10th run in the bottom of the sixth and sealed the Vikings' no-hit bid. See a breaking ball outside for ball one. I will mention that that no-hitter was a combined no-hitter. It was two freshman pitchers, Cormac Saunders and Henry Humes, allowed zero hits through six innings against the Crusaders. Rainey pops that one foul, one and one now. Saunders did walk eight, however, and he hit another batter. He had the bases loaded in two separate innings, so it didn't exactly feel like the dominant no runners on, but
but you only walked one throughout the game. There was there was definitely periods of time where runs definitely could have scored. Fouled back yet again, one and two. So day one pitch away from getting through this second inning and just three batters trying to replicate what Vince Waterman is doing. Rainey calls time, steps out. Here's the one-two from Day. Breaking ball that Rainey checked his swing on and he did not go. Day not too happy about that. He's jumping around. But in my opinion, it wasn't it wasn't close. I think that he got a little bit too over anxious about it. Count is even now, two and two. Here's a pitch to Rainey. Fouls it back. Staying alive. Still with a 2 2 count. Once again, Vikings batters doing a great job of working counts against Day, getting the pitch count up. Swing and a miss on breaking ball. Rainey strikes out to end the second inning. So th we're through two innings, and we still have not seen a runner on base. Vince Waterman has gone six batters to the plate and six batters sent back to the dugout. He'll try and continue that streak starting with the Thunderbolts first baseman, Caleb Alexander. Leading off the top of the third inning for the Thunderbolts, first baseman number 10, Caleb Alexander. First pitch, Alexander will see. It's a strike from a fastball at the top of the zone. 0 and 1. Waterman has been cruising so far. Ball just barely up. 1 and 1 now. That was a very similar pitch to the first one, but it was just a hair higher. 1-1 one, one pitch to Alexander. Strike two. Alexander is yet to pick the bat up off his shoulders. He's seen three pretty good pitches go by, all on fastballs. Wonder if he'll see a breaking ball or an off-speed pitch right here. 1-2. One, he did see an off-speed pitch and then lines it into left field. Chris Webb is going to go over, and he's going to run it down in the left field corner. A great running play by Chris Webb for the first out of the third inning. Second baseman, number 25, Ryan Cahill. Ryan Cahill, the second baseman for these Thunderbolts, will try and break up what Vince Waterman is doing. He's gone eight up, excuse me, seven up, seven down so far. Cahill is trying to make it eight with that swing, 0-1. Oh 
0-1 pitch from Waterman. Awkward swing. Came in on the hands of Cahill. He fouled it off 0-2. Waterman has gotten to this 0-2 count two separate times, but has yet to finish off a batter with a punch out. 0-2 pitch from Vince. That one's flied into center field. Head and Ballard talking. Head will take it, and that is the second out of the third inning. Catcher number 33, Michael Holtman. Michael Holtman, the backstop for the Thunderbolts. He's going to try and get something going for the for the Thunderbolts. They've gotten absolutely nothing so far against Vince Waterman so far. Holtman watches ball one. One and oh. Here's a pitch from Waterman. That's lined out into center field. Head and Ballard talking once again. And that is going to be a three up, three down, top of the third inning once again for Vince Waterman. He's gone nine batters up, nine batters down, and will go to the bottom of the third, still searching for that first base runner. Chris Webb will lead off this third inning for the Vikings. He's going to try and get something, anything going against Alex Day. Day has done a good job of keeping Vikings batters off of the base paths. He's been six up, six down so far. We have yet to see a runner from either side reach base. For the Vikings in the bottom of the third inning, left fielder number 23, Chris Webb. Webb went one for three against Brother Rice last Friday. By this time in the first matchup between these two teams, it was five to three already. And in this one, we've gone 15 batters up and we have yet to see a batter reach first base. So five straight perfect innings for Day and Waterman. Chris Webb will try and break that streak with a leadoff single right here. Ooh. 0 oh 1. I tried to predict it. I can sometimes do that. It's usually with stolen bases, but I've yet to predict a hit. 0 oh 1 is a count to Webb. 0 oh 2. Two fastballs have Day ahead in the count. No balls and two strikes. O2 pitch to Webb, poked, shallow right field, foul territory, and it will get down. Still 0-2 to Chris Webb. Day comes set, here's the O2 pitch to Chris. 
It's grounded on two hops into Miller's glove, and he's not going to be able to come up with it. That's a hard hit ball. That might be a hit, but that's probably going to be an error as Miller got a glove on it. It was right into the glove. So E5 is how the bottom of the third is going to get started. It breaks up the perfect game for day, but no hitter is still there. Nico Bilgi, the third baseman today for the Vikings, did not play against Brother Rice. He was coming off of his outing against Marion Catholic, so he was resting his arm. Bilgi is the only true two-way player that the Vikings have. Pickoff attempt, nothing. Webb able to dive back to first safely. Bilgi has one bomb on the air. It came against a good Trinity team while the Vikings were down in Louisville over spring break. Breaking ball strike one from Day. But if there's one thing about Nico Bilgi is that if he puts a barrel on a baseball, that thing is going to go a long way. 0-1. Another breaking ball off the plate. Evens things at a ball and a strike. With that Chris Webb base runner, pickoff attempt, nothing. So with that base runner, it ensures the top of the order will bat in this third inning unless a double play happens, which is still in the equation for the Thunderbolts. Popped foul, one and two. Rob Tate stands on deck. A ball and two strikes to Bilgi, however. It'll swing awkwardly through a fastball. It'll strike out to end to start the third inning. First out in the third. Rob Tate, the shortstop, is the last batter in the Vikings lineup. He went two for two with two runs scored and a run batted in Friday against the Crusaders of Brother Rice. Pickoff attempt. Webb has been able to get back to first every time the day is picked off, and it's not particularly been close. First pitch to Tate is another pickoff attempt, not even a pitch. Webb isn't exactly taking a base stealing lead over at first. He's sort of just falling back on the base. That's how short his lead is. That one's grounded to Cahill at second. He's going to boot it. So they won't get two, but they will get one at first. But it turns the lineup card over for Dylan Head. Head line to right center field to Nick Altabelli. Altabelli was shaded towards that right center field gap. If he had been playing straight up center field, he would have been award. He would have had a, himself a leadoff double. But with first base unoccupied, they are going to intentionally walk Dylan Head. Something we've seen happen many times throughout the season. But that is why you have a very good two hitter in the form of Corey Mulling. Mulling flied to center in the first inning. He's going to try and knock in Chris from second, potentially Dylan from first if he splits a gap. That's low and away. Scooted away from Holtman, but not far away enough for Chris to try and take third. A ball and no strikes is a count to Corey. One zero. That's low yet again. Two balls and no strikes. A walk would load the bases. Mulling is halfway there. Two balls, no strikes, is a count from Day. Mulling is going to line one into shallow center field. 
And Altabelli will make the running catch for the third out of the third inning. Vikings strand two, but they do get two base runners. That's two more than the Thunderbolts can claim. So going into the top of the fourth, it's still nothing, nothing. Vince Waterman has completed one full trip through the Thunderbolts order without allowing a base runner. He's allowed no hits, no walks, no hit by pitches, nothing. So leading off the fourth inning is going to be the man who let off the first, Patrick Keating. Keating flied to right field in his first at bat. Here's the first pitch you'll see from Waterman. It's tipped foul 0-1. Keating has made a few great defensive plays to keep the Vikings off the base paths. He made a great one-hop, great play on a one-hop rocket off the bat of Jason Ballard, and then made a nice backhand play to Rob Preston Lund of a leadoff single in the second. He's going to send one back up the middle. It's the first hit and base runner for the Thunderbolts. Comes in the top of the fourth. It's the first hit for either side. Center fielder number 24, Nick Altabelli. Nick Altabelli, the center fielder for the Thunderbolts, grounded to Nico Bilgi at third. It was a one-hop missile that Bilgi just stuck his glove out and snared. Another one of those, and that's two outs for the Vikings. 5-4-3 double play. Ball one to Altabelli. It was up and out. One and zero is the count from one. He'll pick off to no avail. Keating able to dive safely into first. That one zero is too high. Two balls and no strikes is the count. Waterman just needs to find the zone. And once he finds it, he's able to dial it in. Another pickoff attempt. Keating doesn't even need to slide. He just walks calmly back to the base. Two roll. Upstairs yet again. It's three balls and no strikes. Finn's trying to avoid back-to-back -back base runners to start the top of the fourth after going... Three up, three down in the first three innings. He's down 3-0 to Altabelli. And it's a four-pitch walk that sends the runners that sends the runner Keating to second base and into scoring position. And with those two leadoff base runners, Vince Davis will come out and have a chat. Pitching coach just trying to calm Vince Waterman down potentially discuss what they want to do with Lincante. Jack Lincante grounded to first base his first time up. They can, if Vince can get another ground ball out of Lincante, I'm sure that the Vikings would trade two outs for advancing Keating to third. 
because then you would get Altabelli at second and then Lincante at first, but then Keating would advance to third, assuming that is it is a ground ball to anyone other than Nico Bilgi. No Bilgi way. can step on first and then throw to first. Well, step on third and then go to first. If Lincante does, in fact, roll over, double play ball is in question. He squares Bunt, Bunt's it foul, however. So Thunderbolt's trying to go with a little bit of small ball action. After they put up 14 runs, excuse me, 13 runs in 12 innings against these Vikings. Last time these two faced off. Neither team has yet to score through three. We're in the top of the fourth. 0-1 pitch. He squares again in the dirt. Skips away from Lund. Here's the throw. Not in time to get Keating. And Altabelli moves up to second. So that essentially does Lincante's job for him. He moved those runners over a base. And he's still up to the up to bat with a 1-1 count on him. So now the Vikings are going to go corners in. Elijah Rainey and Nico Bilgi playing in on the cut of the grass. That's fouled off down the left field line, one and two. Strikeout here will be big. Waterman still looking for his first punch out of today. One, two, to Lincante. Swing and a miss. A fastball just blew Lincante away. And it's the first strikeout of the game for Vince Waterman. It comes at a big time. It was needed right there. Danny O'Malley. Left fielder Danny O'Malley grounded to first base to start the second inning for his first and only at bat. Take a breaking ball just low. 1-0. That one looked to be pretty good. But catcher Preston Lund perhaps received it wrong. He sort of moved his glove down with the pitch. That one's grounded to Mulling at second. It's going to score a run for the Thunderbolts, but it will be the second out of the fourth inning. But an RBI ground out off the bat of Danny O'Malley gives the Thunderbolts a 1-0 lead. That leadoff single comes around to score. Miller. Jacob Miller lined to Corey Malling at second base for his first at bat. I'll take ball one from Waterman. Altabelli stands on third now. He advanced to third on that ground ball from O'Malley. One zero pitch from Waterman. Top of the zone, strike one. One one. That's grounded, back up the middle. Diving try by Tate, does not come up with the ball. It's a two out single for Jacob Miller. And the second run of the game for the Thunderbolts comes across. Lee. Ryan Lee grounded to second base to end the second inning. His last time up. He's going to pop that one foul. First base side, 0 1. So after Waterman faced the minimum through three. This will be his sixth batter of the inning. It's tipped foul, 0-2. Good change up right there from Vince. Vikings needed to, needed to score regardless. Two runs is nothing to this team. They're averaging nine and a half runs per game over their last eight games. In the dirt, Lee chases. Lund is going to throw to first, even though he didn't have to. Yes, he did have to because there was two outs. A drop third strike 
and an accurate throw on to first ends the fourth inning, but not before Andrew scratches across two runs going into the bottom of the fourth. The Vikings trail by two. Jason Ballard grounded to the shortstop. Patrick Keating in the first Three inning. Hops. It was a one-hop rocket that Keating was able to glove. Number five, Jason Ballard. He'll try and be the first Vikings hit of the day off Alex Day. Breaking ball locks him up 0-1. We've seen Day start a few batters like that. 0-1 to Ballard now. Breaking ball up and in 1-1. One and one. Count is even. A ball and a strike to Jason. Another breaking ball way upstairs, two and one. Two balls, one strike to Jason. Two one from Day. Just low, three and one. Jason trying to grab his 30th walk on the year. It'll put him just too shy of the record set by Jake Virgo in 2002. There's strike two on the outside corner. That looked to be a makeup call for the previous pitch. That was, if not the same spot, an even worse spot. It's full to Ballard to start the fourth. Here's a 3-2. Ballard pops it up behind home and it will Drift out of play. Still full. Jam shot foul. We'll do the full count pitch one more time. Once again, Vikings batters working counts against Alex Day. They're still looking for their first hit. That one's lined in the center field, going back, and that ball is way gone. Jason Ballard gets the Vikings on the board with their first hit of the game and his seventh home run of the year, breaking the tie between he and Dylan Head atop the Vikings home run leaderboard. And just like that, the lead is cut in half. It's two to one in the bottom of the fourth. That'll energize that offense. A home run off the bat of Jason Ballard. Preston Lund trying to follow that up. Lund grounded to short in the second. That was a bomb by Ballard. That cut through the wind. That's blowing directly into left field. That one's low, 1-0 one to Lund.
1-0 pitch from Day. Big swing and a miss from Lund. Lund was trying to even the game right there. Instead, he evens the count at a ball and a strike. One one pitch from Day. Breaking ball and it clips him. Just like the Thunderbolts, the Vikings have back to back base runners to start the fourth. One was a home run that's circled the bases. One is going to stand on first base. Josh Moore will courtesy run for Preston on first. Justin Kane hitter, number 13. Isaiah White. Isaiah White, the DH today, grounded to short for his first step out of the day. Josh Moore is definitely a base stealing threat over at first. We'll see if Day acknowledges that with a pickoff. Long look in. Now White will call time. White squares bunt, pulls back. That was a breaking ball in the dirt. Good block by Holtman. On that last pitch, fans counted down to exactly when Alex Day was going to deliver the pitch. one -oh. Inside, ball two. So Day might be a little bit rattled after that leadoff home run from Jason Ballard to start the fourth. He hit Preston Lund to put him at first base, and now he's behind 2-0 to Isaiah White. Pickoff attempt. Moore dives in safely to first. Two-zero pitch to White, swing and a miss. Two and one. Two balls and a strike to Isaiah. Trying to give the Vikings a lead. He squares bunt and gets it down the first base side. Great bunt. He does its job, and he is going to be out at first base. But he advances Josh to second. A sacrifice bunt puts Josh Moore in scoring position. And the tying run is at second base for Elijah Rainey. First baseman, number four, Elijah Rainey. Rainey struck out in the second. It's, it was the first of two strikeouts for Alex Day. Rainey will try and come through clutch for the Vikings right here. First pitch from Day. In the dirt, Haltman able to body that one up, keep it in front of him. 1-0. If Rainey can just send a ball into the outfield for a single, Moore's probably going to score. He's got good speed at second. Rainey calls time, steps out. One zero pitch to Rainey, swing and a miss. One and one. Rainey has had some great base, great clutch hits for the Vikings. He ended Nico Bilgi's no hitter with a walk off double against Bradley on Senior Night, a one to nothing victory for the Vikings. Now he calls time yet again. Ball on a strike as it counts to Elijah. Pickoff attempt. Moore is safe at second base. He was able to get his hand in there before the tag from Cahill. Gave every Vikings fan a heart attack right there. But Josh Moore still stands on second base. A ball and a strike. Still the count to Rainey. 1-1. One, one. 
Breaking ball in the dirt and outside, two and one now. That breaking ball from Day is either perfectly located or right down the middle. That one is popped up just past the infield and Keating will call for it for the second out of the fourth. Chris Webb ended the perfect game from Alex Day. He reached base on an error by Jacob Miller, third baseman. That started the third. He was stranded on second base when the third ended. He'll try and drive in Josh Moore from second. Moore was able to shuffle back to the base before Day could even have a chance to throw it there. He went with the inside move, picked his leg up, and then came down on the other side of the rubber. Breaking ball up and in, 1-0. Webb calls time. A lot of Vikings hitters making Day wait to throw a pitch. one -oh, Moore takes off for third. That's in the dirt. Holtman can't come up with it, and it's going to be a stolen base for Josh Moore. Just like that, a tying run is 90 feet away, and a pass ball is going to score him. Two balls and no strikes is the count to Chris Webb. Here's a pitch from Day. Swing and a miss, two and one. Webb has been late on a few fastballs from Day. If he can catch up to one, he can give the Vikings potentially a lead. He can send one out of here. That's in the dirt, three and one. Holtman was able to put a glove on that one. Keep it in front of him, keep Moore at third. Nico Bilgi waits on deck. Bilgi struck out in the third inning. We gotta get to him first. It's three and one to Chris Webb. Webb pops it up behind home and it will drift out of play. Full count now. Two outs, tying run on third in the bottom of the fourth inning. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Here's a pitch to Webb. It's, fight, it's fought off down the right field line. Still three and two. Full count pitch one more time. Here it is. It's low, it's ball four. The inning is extended for Nico Bilgi. Runners on the corners now. Two outs. Tying run on third. Go ahead run at first for Nico Bilgi. Third baseman, number eight, Nico Bilgi. If Bilgi can split a gap, Chris Webb also has wheels on, th on first base. So if he can send one into one of the left or right field corners. That one's chopped right at Alexander at first base. And that is going to end a f the fourth inning for the Vikings. But they do get one thanks to a solo shot off the bat of Jason Ballard. So after four, the Vikings trail by one.
Caleb Alexander, the first baseman for these Thunderbolts, line to left field to start the third inning. Vince Waterman will try and get him out again to start the fifth. Leading off the fifth inning. First baseman, number 10, Caleb Alexander. First pitch from Waterman. Fastball on the outside corner, 0-1. Waterman trying to rebound after a two-run top of the fourth inning. Two singles and a walk did it for the Thunderbolts. Jam shot on the ground, Rainey up with it at first. He'll take it himself for the first out of the fifth. Waterman seems to have a little bit extra velocity. Might be juiced up after, after that Jason Ballard home run. Number 25, Ryan Cahill. Ryan Cahill, the second baseman, flied to center field. That was in the third. Takes ball one outside from Waterman. One and oh. Here's the pitch from Waterman. Good pitch on the low and inside corner. Evens things at a ball and a strike. One and one. In the dirt, two and one. Left-handers have had a particularly tough time against Waterman today and historically throughout the season. That's low, three and one. Waterman has that two-seam action to his fastball where it tails in on the hands of left-handed batters and then tunneling that with his changeup and slider. Works well against lefties. He's 3-1 against Cahill. It's low. It's a five-pitch walk of Cahill. And the Thunderbolts have a runner on first with one out. Last hitter. In the Thunderbolts lineup, Michael Holtman flied to center field. That ended the third inning. A ground ball to any one of the infielders would likely end the fifth. First pitch from Waterman. In there for strike one. Holtman thought about swinging. Swing and a miss, 0-2. That was some high cheese right there from Vince. Holtman was way late on it. Very quickly, 0-2 to Holtman. That's fouled back. Cahill took off for second right there. Still 0-2 to Holtman. Waterman looking for his second punch out, excuse me, third punch out of the day. Fouled back. Still 0-2. He struck out two in the fourth. Looking to add his third in the fifth. No balls, two strikes, one out. Top of the fifth, pickoff attempt, Cahill in safely. Oh and two, still the count to, to Michael Holtman. Checked his swing, yes he did. It's Waterman's third strikeout of the day and it comes at a big time. Turns things over for the top of the lineup with two outs. Shortstop up, number 14, Patrick Keating. Keating broke up Vince Waterman's perfect game with a leadoff single in the fourth inning. Keating later came around to score the first run of Andrew's day. That was a ground ball to Corey Mulling. That scored Keating. That first pitch was low and away. Ball one.
pickoff attempt. Cahill able to be safe at first. One zero from Waterman. Cahill takes off yet again. Here's a throw from Lund. Not in time. Lund thought he had him. Vikings fans thought he had him. But it's a stolen base for Ryan Cahill. Two and zero is a count to Keating. Upstairs, 3-0. Waterman trying to avoid his second walk of the inning. He walked Cahill, who now stands on second. 3-0. There's strike one. Can't come back from 3-0 without getting strike one. So hopefully it's a sign of good things for Vince, at least in this at-bat. 3-1. It's low. It's ball four. Runners on first and second for Nick Altabelli. Altabelli is, one for, is 0 for 1 with a walk. On Altabelli's walk last inning, he came around to score on Jacob Miller's RBI single. First pitch from Waterman. Swing and a miss. Altabelli was way late on that one. Practically swung after Lund had already caught it. No balls and a strike from Waterman. Here's a pitch to Altabelli. Soft liner. Diving, leaping grab by Mulling is not was not successful. It's a bloop single for Nick Altabelli, and it scores the third run of the Thunderbolts' day. Just glances off of the leather from Corey Mulling, and it falls in shallow center field. Right fielder number two, Jack Conlante. So that one-out walk to Cahill serves to be a thorn in the side of Vince Waterman. He'll face Jacqueline Conte now with two on and two outs. Conte tried to check his swing. He d could not. And Conte's 0 for 2 with a strikeout today. He struck out in the fourth inning in his last at bat. O one 1 pitch from Waterman. Off the plate. Evens things at a ball and a strike. One and one to Lincante. Off the plate, two and one now. So Waterman was cruising through three. He's fallen on a bit of a rough patch, second and third time through the order. That two one is at the knees for strike two. So although it might seem like these Andrew Thunderbolts are sort of getting, out, getting on base at will. They only have a two run lead. Waterman trying to keep it at just two. Two, two. That one is smoked to center field, head racing back on, he's at the track and he's gonna make the catch. Waterman thought that he had just allowed a three run bomb, but it is just a long fly out to center field. Thunderbolts do get one back and they lead it three to one after four and a half.
Rob Tate, the last hitter in the Vikings lineup, is going to be the first hitter of the Vikings' fifth inning. Try and start something against Alex Day for the Vikings. Jason Ballard led off the fourth with his seventh home run of the year. Rob Tate takes ball one, low. Rob grounded to second base for his first time up. And he will ground past the second baseman into right field for a leadoff single. And it gets away from Lincante, but not far away enough for Tate to try and take second. It will be only a leadoff single, and it turns things over to the top of the lineup in Dylan Head. Dylan Head was intentionally walked last time up in the third. He then was stranded on first. He lined to center field in the first Dylan inning. Hey. One swing of the bat and this ball game is tied. Fun fact, Jason Ballard and Dylan Head have both hit their fourth, fifth, and sixth home runs in the same game. So when Head homers, Ballard homers, and when Ballard homers, Head homers. Jason Ballard already homered in the fourth today. So if trends continue, we are due for a Dylan Head bomb. Now would be a good time for one. He does represent the tying run. Big swing and a miss, 0-1. Heavy dosage of breaking balls to head from day so far. Even though he's only faced him for about 10 pitches, four or five of those have been off speed. 0-1 in the dirt, 1-1. Nine one down the left field line. One one, low and away. Two and one. If he can set up Corey Mulling and the heart of the Vikings lineup well, the Vikings will score some runs. Two and one is a count to head. Pickoff attempt. Tate dives back into first. A fan was yelling steal second, so maybe. Day thought that Tate was going to take that to heart and try and steal second. Who knows, he still might. Two one. Head takes that one upstairs, three balls and one strike. Dangerously close. Hits him. It's back-to-back -back base runners to start the fifth inning for Corey. It was a shallowly hit ball that Altabelli was able to run down. Corey Mulling has four home runs on the year. If he could add his fifth, it would give the Vikings a 4-3 lead. But he's just worried about barreling a baseball and advancing Tate, maybe scoring him. Day will spin. Nothing to second. First pitch to Mulling. In the dirt. Good block by Haltman. 1 0. Ball and no strikes is the count. Mulling sends one. Deep right center field. The ball is going to be inside the park. But two runs are going to score for the Vikings. And it is going to be a Corey Mulling triple. Corey Mulling ties it with a triple to right center field. And as you can hear, right at three, a great way to respond. And Jason Ballard, the man who played at the first run of the game with a drive to left field, was a solo shot to start the fourth. And now 
There will be a meeting on the mound with Alex Day. Three consecutive base runners to start the fifth. Ooh, that was a that was a big, big spot for Corey Mulling that he came through in. You needed those at least those two runs at the very minimum that inning. And now the Vikings have a chance to take the lead. Aggressive base running by Corey Mulling. Has the go-ahead run just 90 feet away. Jason Ballard trying to add to his already stellar performance today, even if he stopped hitting right now. A homer is as good as anything the Vikings could have asked for. And how, oh, that one was almost a ground ball down the third base line. It's foul, however. Mulling was able to duck out of the way of that one. and one to Ballard. Here's a pitch from Day. Low and away. One and one. One and one to Ballard. Trying to do his job. Score mulling from third. Give the Vikings a four to three lead. Swing and a miss. One and two. Day turned up the gas for that one. Ballard was pretty late on it. One and two. Swing and a miss. Ballard goes down on strikes for the first out of the fifth inning. But thankfully, Vikings still have two more outs to work with. Preston Lund is over one with a hit by pitch today. If Preston can just get a ground ball on the infield, a run's going to score from third. Better yet, if he can single into the outfield, just get on base in any way, a run's going to score for the Vikings. Breaking ball way off the plate. Ball one. One and O oh to Preston. Here's a pitch from Day. Way up and in and it hits him again. His second hit by pitch of the day. Lund isn't too happy about it. I'm sure he'll remember that. He's been hit twice today and hitting the catcher is not a good thing to do because they can call a fastball up and in on your star player. So now runners on the corners for Isaiah White. White is 0 for 2 today. His last at bat was a sack bunt that advanced Josh Moore to second base. Moore is on first now after he will after he courtesy runs for Preston Lund. First pitch to White is a pickoff. Moore dives into first safely. Wouldn't be shocked if we see Moore take off pretty soon into this at bat. The Vikings have, yes, have yet to test Holtman behind the dish. First pitch to White. Moore takes off. And it's going to be a hit and run, and it is going to be right at Lincante in right field, and it's going to score a run for the Vikings. Lincante messed up. Moore was all the way at second base. He could have thrown to first and picked off and doubled off Josh Moore. Instead, he elects to throw all the way home, and it gives the Vikings a 4-3 lead. 
Corey Mulling tagged up and scored. The throw was way offline. A little bit of mental errors for the Thunderbolts. Give the Vikings the lead. How big is that? And now Elijah Rainey, who is over two today, will have a chance to bat with a runner on first and two outs. Pickoff attempt. More dives into first safely. First pitch to Rainey. Swing and a miss. 0 and 1. Rainey has what they call light tower power. So he can send one out of here in a hurry. If he barrels one up and elevates it. Owen one to Rainey. Moore takes off yet again. Good pitch to run on. The throw is not in time. It's another stolen base for Josh Moore. His second of the day. It was a great pitch to run on. It was a breaking ball that Holtman had to come outside for. So he had to cross his body with the glove and then throw down to second base. One and one to Rainey. Good take by Elijah right there, two and one. We've seen that be a little pitches. So a good take right there, has him ahead in the count, two balls and one strike. Still nobody up in that Thunderbolts bullpen. Two one to Elijah. Breaking ball well off the plate, three and one now. Still 3-1. Tipped into the glove of Holtman. It's full now. Elijah trying to drive Josh Moore in from second base. Day is clearly very worried about Moore over there at third. At second, trying to prevent him from getting to the third. That's popped foul. Still full. Strikes out to end the fifth inning, but not before three runs come across the plate for the Vikings. And going into the sixth inning, they hold a one-run lead. Vince Waterman back out on the mound for his sixth inning of work. He'll face the four, five, six hitters in the Andrew Thunderbolts lineup, starting with the left fielder, Danny O'Malley. O'Malley is 0 for 2 today, but he does have an RBI. 
He drove in the first run of the game for the Thunderbolts in the fourth inning. First pitch from Waterman to O'Malley. The fat is a breaking ball that O'Malley swings awkwardly at. 0-1. A little bit of a sword right there from Waterman. Fastball on the outside corner. It's 0-2. So Vince trying to settle down after two little bit shaky innings. Only have allowed three so far. 0-2 to O'Malley. That was about 58 feet. It's two and two, one and two now. O'Malley has grounded to each of the, the infielders on the right side of the field. Once to second, once to first. And he will bounce past Corey Mulling for a leadoff single in the fifth. So Danny O'Malley starts the sixth with a single for the Thunderbolts. Jacob Miller is one for two today. He also singled to center field in the fourth. It scored a run for the Thunderbolts. Miller's first at bat, he lined to second base. It was a line drive that Corey Mulling had to stick his glove up for. And that was about all he had to do was hit right at him. A ground ball right here would be very appreciated by Vince Waterman. A little 6-4-3 double play action. Who knows? First pitch to Miller. Strike one at the knees. When Waterman has gotten ahead, he's usually been successful in getting the batter out. But it's when he falls behind in the count is when they do damage to him. A one. Breaking ball off the plate. One and one. One ball, one strike. There's a pitch to Miller. It's a pickoff attempt. Nothing at first. O'Malley able to fall on the base. One, one. High and a little bit in. Two and one. Two balls, one strike. Nobody out here in the top of the sixth. It's just barely upstairs, three and one. Believe if Vince does walk this batter, gotta believe that his day might be done soon. Three, one. It's ball four. It's back to back base runners to start the sixth for the Thunderbolts. So now Rob Tate and Elijah Rainey will have a chat with Vince. And so will head coach John McCarthy. McCarthy's going to come out of the dugout. That looks like it's going to be all she wrote for Vince. Vince Waterman was a very good pitcher today. Five innings pitched, three earned runs. He'll depart with both runners on base being his. You see his Vikings teammates out of the dugout to congratulate him. Great start for Vince. And we'll step out. It is. So Jack Barry comes out of the pen to protect a one-run lead with runners on first and second and nobody out. Top six.
Jack Barry is the new pitcher on the hill for the Vikings. In Barry's last outing, it was out of the bullpen against Marion Catholic. He went three innings pitched, allowed four hits, two earned runs, and struck out two. Did not walk anybody. He got the save in that matchup. It was an 11-7 victory for the Vikings, but he came in when it was a 6-5 game. He'll face Ryan Lee, the DH, who is 0-2 today with Danny O'Malley on second and Jacob Miller on first. Ground ball would be big right here for the Vikings. Squares bunt and fouls it down the first base line. Lay does. Lay has ended both the second and the fourth inning. We've seen that happen a few times before where the same batter has ended second, fourth, and sixth. Barry steps off. Still 0-2. Barry has the advantage. Lay already struck out in the fourth. Barry looking to add his second. Just low, 1-2. Great pitch there from Barry. Barry's still ahead. One pitch. He's got a strikeout. One, two. Tipped into the glove of Lund. It's a strikeout of Lay. And that's a big out right there. A double play ball, which Jack Barry is so great at getting, ends the sixth inning. Caleb Alexander has lined to left and grounded to first. If Barry can get Alexander out in front of a slider, maybe jam him on a fastball. Alexander lines one into left field. Chris Webb is up with it. And the throw is going to be cut off by Bilger. Here's the throw. It's not in time. Ball game is tied 4-4. Alexander was out in front of a slider, but he was able to dunk it in front of Chris Webb in left field. So the leadoff single comes back to haunt the Vikings. Ryan Cahill, the second baseman, is 0 for 1 with a walk today. Once again, ground ball, double play ends the inning. It's just low, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Here's a pitch to Cahill. Strike one on the outside corner. Cahill walked and later Came around to score last inning in the fifth. Stole a base while he was out there. That's low. Ball two. Barry is having some uncharacteristic control issues in the sixth. He hasn't had his pinpoint command that he usually does. 2-1. Just off the plate, 3-1. That was almost identical to the pitch that the umpire called strike one. But it's ball three. Three and one to Cahill. A walk would load the bases. Three one. There's strike one. Cahill thought it was ball four. He was getting ready to toss his bat back to the dugout. He'll stay in the box and see the full count pitch from Jack Barry. Strike out here. Would be, be would be big. Full count. Tipped just barely off the glove of Lund. Still full. There's a good slider right there from Barry. Got it. Got it in on the hands of Cahill. 
He was able to just barely fight it off. Full count one more time. Ball four outside. It's going to load the bases. For the catcher, Michael Holtman. No, excuse me, they're gonna be, there's going to be a pinch hitter. It won't be Michael Holtman. Jaden Frankowick will be the pinch hitter. Frankowick will come in with the bases loaded and one out. Tying, excuse me, go-ahead run on third base. A ground ball is the last thing that the Thunderbolts want, but the first thing that the Vikings want. A double play ends the inning, and hopefully the ball game will still be tied at four. Here's the first pitch from Barry. He'll pop it, foul, 0-1. This is the loudest I've heard any crowd this year for either side. Both sides represented well tonight, Vikings and Thunderbolts fans. Pretty loud here. 0-1 to Frankowick. Grounded through the left side. One run's going to score. Only one run's going to score. It's a bases loaded single for Frankowick and it gives the Thunderbolts a 5-4 lead in the top of the sixth. Top of the lineup now up for the Thunderbolts. Patrick Keating is one for two with a walk today. So now Frankowick will be pinch run for on first. Base is still loaded for the Thunderbolts in the top of the sixth. One out. So Vikings still need two. Patrick Keating was walked his last time up. Take ball one from Jack, low, maybe a bit outside, 1-0. and oh. 1-0 pitch from Barry. Just low, 2-0. and oh. Barry has struggled with command so far. Very unlike him. 2-0. That one's flied into center field. Dylan Head is going to settle under it. He's going to make the catch. Here's the throw. It's going to be safe at home. A sixth run comes across for the Thunderbolts. They have a two-run lead now. Sack fly off the bat of Patrick Keating. Scores Caleb Alexander from third. Center fielder, number 24, Nick Altabelli. Nick Altabelli is one for two with a walk as well. His last at bat was an RBI single to center field. First pitch from Barry. Way outside, good block by Lund. Able to get a glove on it. So the Thunderbolts have scored in every inning since the fourth. They scored two in the fourth, one in the fifth, and three in the sixth, and it's not over yet. But the Vikings have also scored in the two innings that they've had to bat. Scored one in the fourth, three in the fifth. Breaking ball strike one to Altabelli. Evens things at a ball and a strike. One.
ground one. Here's a pitch from Be Barry. Strike two on the outside corner. Out the belly doesn't like it, but it was there. Great spot from Jack right there. One strike away from getting out of it. Two runs is definitely doable. One, two. Lined into center field. Valerie will have no play. He'll watch it fall in front of him. Here's the throw to the plate. It's going to be in time. A hose by Jason Ballard ends the top of the sixth inning. The Thunderbolts get three. They take a 6-4 lead, but it could have been way more. Jason Ballard cuts down Ryan Cahill at the plate. Going into the bottom of the sixth, Vikings trail by two, but they have a bit of momentum. Last three hitters in the Vikings lineup are due to bat in the sixth, starting with Chris Webb. Chris Webb is, has reached base twice today. He's technically 0 for 0. He reached on an error in the third, walked in the fourth, and now start the sixth. Vikings have gotten their leadoff batter on in each of the last three innings. A single by Rob Tate started the fifth. A solo shot by Jason Ballard in the fourth, and then Chris Webb's error in the third. Hopefully he can start the sixth like he did the third by getting on base. He'll take strike one from Alex Day. Day back out on the mound for his sixth inning. Hopefully the Vikings are able to jump on him like the Thunderbolts did to the Vikings starter, Vince Waterman, in his sixth inning. 0-1 to Webb, off the plate and low, 1-1. One and one. A ball and a strike is a count to Chris. 1-1, one, one. breaking ball way upstairs, 2-1. Two and one to Chris. Webb just trying to do anything, get on base. Swing and a miss, two and two. Well-located fastball there by Day on the outside corner. Evens things at two balls and two strikes. Here's a pitch. It's low, it's a ball, it's ball three, and it's a full count to start the sixth inning. Big pitch right here. A leadoff walk would likely end Alex Day's night sooner than what he had expected. Full count pitch. Swing and a miss. Webb chased ball four and he knew it. First out of the sixth inning sends Nico Bilgi to the plate. Nico Bilgi. Bilgi's 0 for 2 today. He struck out in the third and then grounded to first in his last at-bat. Bilgi trying to get something going for the Vikings here in the sixth. Got five outs left to work with. They need at least two. Big swing by Bilgi. Just fouled it back 0-1.
No balls and a strike to Nico. Oh, one. Breaking ball off the plate. One and one. Count is even. A ball and a strike to Nico. Bills are trying to start something for the Vikes here in the sixth. Can't do anything with that pitch. That's way up and out. Two and one. Here's the two one pitch from Day. Strike two, a fastball on the outside corner. Count is even, two balls and two strikes. Day wanted that call, didn't get it. It's full now. Three balls and two strikes. Full count pitch to Nico. Second batter in a row that Day is sent to a full count. Got Webb swinging to start the sixth. Bilgey trying to avoid that same fate. Full count pitch to Nico. Tapped foul, still full. Bilgey doing his best job, his best Rob Tate impression of fouling off pitches until he finds one that he likes. Rob Tate, who is on deck, is so great at that. Just sticking the bat out there, fouling off anything that he doesn't like. 3-2 one more time. Swing and a miss. Bilgey goes down on strikes. Second strikeout of the sixth inning for Alex Day. Rob Tate is one for two today. He singled to right field and scored a run in the fifth. There's a three run bottom of the fifth. But it's starting to get to starting to be crunch time for the Vikings. They would need to score two in the bottom of the seventh to just have a chance at going to extras if they don't score here. So now Tate will come to bat. Run to the plate and Dylan Head. Head is the top of the order. He waits on deck. First pitch to Rob. Low and in, ball one. One and zero oh is a count. Here's a pitch from Day, way outside, two balls and no strikes. Day has to find the zone right here. Going to a three-ball count is not exactly what you want to do with a nine-hole hitter, especially when the leadoff man is the number one player in the state of Illinois. Two and zero. Oh. Here's a pitch, grounded to Keating at short, and he is going to make the play to end the sixth inning. So through six innings, it's six four Thunderbolts. Vikings chasing two.
We got a new pitcher in the game for the Vikings, relieving Jack Barry of his duties on the hill. It's going to be Nico Bilgi. Bilgi slides over from third base to the mound. Jacob Gunn will take his spot at the hot corner. Bilgi was slated to start the game against Providence on Saturday, but with it being crunch time for the Vikings and Coach McCarthy wanting to throw out somebody who he can be confident to throw up a zero, he goes to Bilgi. Lincante greets him with a leadoff single on the first pitch. So Lincante is now one for four on the day. Danny O'Malley is one for three today. His last at bat, he singled to center field. He later scored a run. That was the leadoff man of the sixth inning. So Lincante was the only batter who didn't come to the plate in the sixth. There's strike one to O'Malley. Bills you works quick. Barely have any time to talk about anything other than the previous pitch. 0-1 to O'Malley. Tried to check his swing, he did. One and one now. One and one, pickoff attempt. Lincante able to run back to first. Up and out, two and one. Bilgi trying to get through this seventh with a zero up on the scoreboard. Another pickoff attempt, nothing. Good thing for the Vikings is that in the top, in the bottom of the seventh, they will have the top of their lineup due up, starting with Dylan Head. That one, that two one is tipped back into the glove of Preston Lund. It's two and two now. Two balls, two strikes. Poked out into shallow center field. Tate and Mulling talking. Tate will take it. O'Malley flies, well, pops to Rob Tate for the first out of the seventh. And the Vikings are just a ground ball away from getting out of it. Jacob Miller is one for two with a walk today. He's got an RBI and a run scored. First pitch to Miller. Low on a breaking ball, 1-0. Bilgey has that hard curve ball that can sort of play well off of his fastball. Another pickoff attempt. Oh, close play over at first. Lincante able to dive back to the base. It was a close play. But sadly, Bilgey was not able to pick him off right there. Another pickoff attempt. That one not as close as the latest. Miller's last at bat. He walked and scored in the sixth. Another pickoff attempt. Nothing. Miller was the last batter to face Vince Waterman before he got pulled in favor of Jack Barry. Barry only got only got through one inning. Good breaking ball there from Nico. One and one. Started at the hands of Miller. Ended up right down the middle. A ball and a strike. Another pickoff attempt. Nothing. One and one to Miller. Now Lincante takes off. It's going to be a hit and run, and it's going to split the right center field gap. Lincante is going to be waved around third. The throw, no, he is not going to be waved around third. The throw is a second, and Lincante was held at third. So it's a one-out single for Jacob Miller, and the runners are on the corners now for Ryan Lay. Designated hitter number three, Ryan 
Lay is 0 for 3 today. His last two at bats have been strikeouts. A ground ball would likely end the inning. Any ground ball to any one of the infielders, they're going to try and turn two. First pitch, breaking ball upstairs, ball one. So now Vikings going infield in, Corey Mulling and Rob Tate moving in to the cut of the grass. Another pickoff attempt, nothing. I say grass, but it's really just green colored turf. First full season for this new stadium at HF. Breaking ball, Fl sky to right, Jason Ballard over. He's gonna catch it, fire home. He already threw out one and he is going to not throw out another. O'Malley able to slide under the tag. Excuse me, not O'Malley. Lincante slides under the tag. Lay plates the seventh run of the Viking of the Thunderbolts day, and now it's a three-run lead. It was a great throw by Jason Ballard, and Preston Lund had just gotten over to home in time to put the tag on Lincante. It would have been. The second inning in a row that Jason Ballard has ended with an outfield assist to home. First pitch to Caleb Alexander is off the plate for ball one. So now Vikings trail by three. They'll need three to tie in the seventh, four to win. That 1-0 is in the dirt and it gets away from Lund. Miller is going to advance to second. Two balls, no strikes. Alexander is one for three today. His last at bat was a single to left, scoring a run. He later scored himself. That's upstairs, ball three. Three zero from Belgi. That's on the inside corner, strike one. Three one from Nico. Alexander tried to check his swing. He did not. Three and two now. So builds you one strike away from sending it to the bottom of the seventh. No, they're saying that it was not a it was not a full swing. Everybody sort of assumed that it was a swing. Alexander thought it was a swing. That's why. I thought it was a swing. He didn't make any attempt to go to first, but now he's at first for Ryan Cahill, who has walked twice and flied to center. We'll take strike one from Bilgi on the outside corner. That one's grounded to Tate at short. He'll flip to Mauling at second base for the third out of the top of the seventh. So down to their final three outs of the season. Vikings need three to tie, four to win.
Last call for the Vikings. But starting their last call is going to be the top of the lineup in Dylan Head. Dylan Head! Head is 0 for 1 today. He's gotten hit by a pitch and was intentionally walked in the third. First pitch from Day is at the knees. Strike one. Alex Day still out on the mound going for a complete game. Head has gone to a full count each of the two times he's faced Day. 0 and 1. Breaking ball. Smoke down the right field line and a foul. 0 and 2. No balls, two strikes. O2 pitch to head. Fastball way upstairs. One and two now. Head still behind in the count. Ball and two strikes today. Here's a pitch. Swing and a miss. Head goes down on strikes for what could be his final high school at bat. But that is his least concern right now. Second baseman, number nine, Corey Mulling. Corey Mulling is one for three today. His last at bat was a triple in re into right field. It scored two runs. He later scored himself. He'll take ball one low from Day. 1-0. and oh. 1-0 to Mulling. There's strike one. Mulling was taking all the way. I would imagine all these Vikings hitters are just taking until they get a strike, trying to run up Day's pitch count. 1-1. Popped behind home, and it will get out of play for strike two. One ball, two strikes to Mulling. Mulling trying to start something for the Vikings in the seventh. It's low. Two and two now. Mulling was about five feet shy of a three-run home run in the fifth. He ended up settling for a triple. Here's a 2-2 from Day. It's low, ball three. So once again, Alex Day finds himself in a full count. Three, two. Grounded to Miller at third, and it eats him up. Mulling is going to be on first, thanks to a, another Jacob Miller error, his second of the day. And that looks like it's going to be all she wrote for Alex Day. So Day is done. One would say night has fallen. So after Corey Mulling reaches base on a one-out error, Jason Ballard will face a new pitcher for the Thunderbolts.
New pitcher in the game for the Thunderbolts. It's going to be the former left fielder, Danny O'Malley. He's going to have to face Jason Ballard with a runner on first and one out. He inherits Press, not Preston Lund, Corey Mulling on first base after Mulling reached on an error by Jacob Miller. Preston Lund waits on deck, so if Ballard can get on and extend the inning to Lund. Lund has been hit by pitch twice and grounded to short. But Jason Ballard is one for three. His lone hit was a solo moon shot in the left field. That led off the fourth. It was the first run of the Vikings day. Vikings looking to scratch across three runs, potentially four to win it in the bottom of the seventh. First pitch from O'Malley. Strike one to Ballard on the inside corner. Ballard struck out his last time up in the fifth. Upstairs, one and one. Vikings still need one more base runner to send the tying run to the plate. A ball and a strike to Jason Ballard. Breaking ball off the plate, good take by Ballard. Two and one. O'Malley spun that one in there, but it just spun too much. And ended up in the left-handed batter's box. Two one. Up and out. Ball three. O'Malley has yet to throw a strike since the first pitch. Three balls and a strike. Ballard trying to send Preston Lund, who would be the tying run to the plate. Three one pitch. Jam shot, and it is going to be over the head of Keating. A single off the bat of Jason Ballard sends the tying run to the plate in the form of Preston Lund. The Vikings are not done yet. Preston Lund has been hit by a pitch his last two times up. One in the fourth, one in the fifth. McCarthy the talking ten. to him, probably telling him, don't overswing. As awesome as a home run would be, you don't want it right here necessarily. You just want him to stay loose and just drive a ball. If it happens to get out, that's awesome. But it's more about getting on base and keeping the train rolling. First pitch from O'Malley. And it hits Lund for the third time. And Lund is going to spike his, or take off his helmet, thought he was going to spike it. It loads the bases and sends the go-ahead run to the plate and winning run to the plate. Three hit by pitches for Preston Lund. You got to think one of them is intentional. Like, and especially that one, that was directly at his head. Oh, well. But now O'Malley will receive a visit as Isaiah White represents the go ahead run and winning run at the plate. A walk-off grand slam would be the craziest story in the history of HF, but it's not necessarily all that you need. A ball that splits the gap can score Josh Moore from first. Moore's pinch running for Lund yet again. Lund being the catcher is entitled to that. Isaiah White Isaiah is over two today with a sack fly. His last at bat was a sack fly to right field that scored the last Vikings run of the day. First pitch from O'Malley. In the dirt and it gets by O'Malley. 
Here comes Mulling, he's gonna score. Both runners move up, and it's 7-5. The tying run is in scoring position. A single ties it. Isaiah White trying to keep the hit parade going. One and oh to Isaiah. He calls time. O'Malley was taking a while. He was looking in there. Trying to get the strike pitch from Haltman. He's been wild. 1-0 to Isaiah. Off the plate, ball two. O'Malley has yet to throw a strike to anybody since Jason Ballard and his single up the middle. Two and zero to Isaiah. Jam shot, and it is going to be over the head of Cahill. Moore's gonna be stopped at third, but a run does score. A jam shot single for Isaiah White sends the tying run to third, and the winning run is aboard. Don't look now, folks, but the Vikes have something cooking. Tying run just 90 feet away. And here is Elijah Rainey, the man who has delivered so many clutch, walk-off, game-winning hits can tie the game or potentially win the game for the Vikings. He's 0 for 3 today, and while a lot of you might think, oh, that means he's just having a bad game, no, he's due. He struck out twice and popped a short, so he is, he's due. O'Malley has yet to have a called strike since the first pitch he threw to Jason Ballard. Pickoff attempt. White able to dive back into first. Okay, excuse me, not Cahill. O'Malley steps <laughs> off. First pitch to Elijah. Breaking ball, falls in there for strike one. There's the first pitch that O'Malley has thrown in the zone since his opening pitch to Jason Ballard. He's yet to locate a fastball. 0-1 pitch to Elijah. In the dirt, and Isaiah's gonna take second. It takes the double play out of the question, and that is big. A ground ball scores a run for the Vikings. And a base hit ends it. Winning run, 180 feet away. Tying run, 90 feet away. Rainey calls time. A ball and a strike to Elijah. He's delivered so many times to the Vikings. Can he come through one more time? 1-1. One, one. In the dirt ball too, great take. These Vikings fans are hanging on to their last breath. Two balls and a strike to Rainey. Here's a pitch from O'Malley. Swing and a miss, two and two. Chris Webb waits on deck. Even a sack fly <laughs> ties it, and it guarantees at least extra innings. But Rainey needs to put a ball in play first. Two and two. Here's a pitch from O'Malley. Outside ball three. Oh, baby. 
a walk would almost be the best thing for the Thunderbolts because then you would set up the double play. Three balls, two strikes, one out in the bottom of the seventh. Here's a full count to Elijah. Breaking ball, he did not go. A full count walk for Elijah Rainey. Extends the inning for Chris Webb with the bases loaded and one out. Chris Webb has reached base twice today. So now Coach McCarthy is going to pinch run for Elijah Rainey. Luke Griggs is going to take his spot on first base. Chris Webb struck out to start the sixth inning, his last time up. He walked in the fourth and reached on an error by Jacob Miller in the, th in the third. An error by Jacob Miller started this seventh inning. It allowed Corey Mulling to reach base. He later came around to score. Biggest spot of the season for Chris Webb. First pitch to Webb. Fouled off, 0-1. Webb showing that he's ready to hit. A ball that touches the outfield grass means the Vikings win. Isaiah White is getting a big secondary lead over there at second base. After the pitch is thrown, he's shuffling down almost to the shortstop Keating. 0-1. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. 0 oh 2. Oh 0 2. One out in the bottom of the seventh. Webb just needs to put a ball in play. 0 oh 2 from O'Malley. In the dirt, ball one. Good block by Holtman. As if that gets through his legs, Josh Moore scores from third, no doubt. We've already seen one wild pitch go the Vikings' way, and it ended the game against Lincoln Way East 6-5 in eight innings. A wild pitch wouldn't necessarily end it, but it would extend the game to at least eight innings. 1-2. Jam shot down the right field line, and that ball is foul. Chris Webb almost ended it. Lincante chose smartly out in right field to let it fall in foul territory because if you catch it, more tags and scores easily. One and two. One two pitch from O'Malley. Breaking ball upstairs. Two balls and two strikes. That breaking ball was just left a little bit high from Danny O'Malley. Two balls and two strikes. There's a 2-2 two -two to Chris Webb. Checked his swing, yes he did. Webb strikes out for the second out of the seventh inning, and it comes down to Nico Bilgi. Bilgi is 0 for 3 today. He struck out in the sixth. He's going to try and be the hero tonight for the Vikings. Bases loaded, two outs, bottom of the seventh, down by one in the playoffs of the state championship. It's a regional semifinal, but whoever wins this 
is moving on. It's the stuff you dream about as kids. Nico Bilgi will hope to bring those dreams into reality against Danny O'Malley. Bilgi struck out in the third, grounded to first in the fourth, and struck out in the sixth. First pitch from O'Malley. Breaking ball in the dirt, 0-1, 1-0, one. One oh, excuse me. A walk is as good as a hit right here. Coaches say that all the time, but right now, it will do the job. A 1-0. and oh. Here's a pitch from O'Malley. Big rip and a foul ball. Evens things at one and one. This is shaping up to be one of the best games of the Vikings year if they can come out on top. One and one. O'Malley to Bilgey. Ball two, high and outside. This is going to be a big pitch from O'Malley. You don't want to go down 3-1. Two balls and a strike to Nico. Here's a 2-1 pitch to Nico. Swing and a miss, he chased ball three. It was up around his neck. And the Vikings are down to their final strike. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bottom of the seventh inning, bases are loaded. Both sides getting loud. Here's a 2-2 from O'Malley. Swing and a miss. A storybook ending for the Vikings comes up just short. They fall 7-6 in seven innings to the Andrew Thunderbolts. And that is going to do it for the 2023 HF Viking baseball season. The Andrew Thunderbolts will play Providence Catholic on Saturday. Providence is the number one team in the state, so good luck to them. So the Vikings finish the year with a record of 19 and 16, a season that was riddled with injuries from the start. Vikings lost two of their top four pitchers in Carter Green and David Anderson early on in the year. And it was just a battle for starting pitching all year. And that is going to be it for the seniors' career. And unfortunately, that is going to be the last game that I call as an HF Viking. It, it's, been a, it's been a blast. It's been real fun. I've enjoyed my time doing it so much. I hope that this isn't the last time you're, you all are going to hear my voice. So for one final time, it's been Dylan Barnes. Have a great night, everybody.